our women will not be able to go to market freely. We can't go to the street. We can't do our businesses freely. We are waiting for crisis to, to start through full blown crisis before we now go back to our roof. If that's all we want, may, may, we not, may we not get to that level. Because there is no way crisis will start. Now everybody will know, okay, if there is war now, they declare war on Yoruba and all these people that know that start, start killing people. People will not go and look for you know, Ayeta and Kong Kong. Ube Kong Kong, the only she to protect themselves. We didn't say it's, it's demonic. No. But because you want to flow with the trend, you try to just come and inspire as it's demonic. Okay? But if you look at most people, so people that even call themselves, I have auntie that preaches in church. I grew up in a very Christian kini. You will see, uh, you will see incision. You will buy normal thing. You now try to give excuse and say, eh, it was when I was in the world, though. It was when I was in the world that time. So you can get a uh, uh, notification in our subsequent uh, conversations. Thank you. Ethiopia will break down. Kenya will break down. Nigeria will break down, South Africa will break down, and look, only last week, the whites in Western Cape in South Africa have delivered a petition to the government in Pretoria saying they want to create their own country. Go to Northern Mozambique. The gas that is there cannot be produced because there is conflict. Northern Mozambique. Go to Somalia conflict. Here, in your motherland, conflict. Go to South Sudan, conflict. Go to Sudan, conflict. Go to Libya, conflict. Go to Central African Republic, conflict. Go to the Democratic Republic of Congo, conflict. Go to Burkina Faso, conflict. Go to Mali, conflict. Go to Chad, conflict. Go to Niger, conflict. Go to Cameroon, conflict. Go to Nigeria, conflict. Do I go on? I fly from Nairobi, Kenya for one and a half hours. I come from the shilling zone. I go into the beer. 33 currencies in Africa. 33 currencies. None of which is used to conclude transactions anywhere. I come to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and I show my shilling. They say, what is shilling? But let me show the dollar. Oh, this is it. Let me show the euro, this is it. 80% of transactions in Africa are concluded outside of the continent in dollars. Because we are not playing in the real league, we are playing in the small league. That is why when the Chinese president summoned all our president and they summoned them, the letters may be polite, but it's summons. They go to Beijing, tails between their legs. Two weeks ago, I watched in great pain on television in Bamako, Mali, young Malians celebrating in the streets that the government of Mali had entered into successful or possible successful negotiation with Wagner, which is a Russian mercenary group to replace the French. And they are saying how beautiful it is now. And I said, a slave celebrating the departure of one slave master and the arrival of another slave master. That is the state in which we are. I watched 
a woman from Nigeria who had been rescued from the Mediterranean around Lampedusa saying, I will not go back to Africa. Even if I die in the Mediterranean, I'll try again and again. What is it that can make a human being say that I do not want to go back to my home? Because the natural instinct of a human being should be that you want to go home. It's because we are weak. So, uh, you live in Ethiopia. Will bring what is it that we make a, a woman to say that I would rather die in the sea than go back to Africa? In today's session, we'll be um, listening to our brothers and sisters from Sudan um, uh, 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 that seek self determination. We'll be listening to their own perspective and understand why why all these artificial creation in Africa are crumbling. Please, I'll be limiting the hand raising only to uh, those following the club. So if you're not seeing the hand raising and you choose to come up, uh, okay, first I will have to, you know, off the hand raising for now. And in a little bit, we'll, you know, limit it to people following the club if uh, when we want uh, questions and answers. Thank you very much. Uh, Bunka, you can take it off from there. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Can I be heard? Can people hear me? Yes, sir, we do. Yes, yes. we can. Let, let's have a beautiful background of what Sudan used to be. Sudan is what we know as Nubia, right? Nubia used to be one of the, no, actually, I take that back not one of. Nubia used to be the richest part of the world. It used to be the richest place in the ancient Mediterranean and, and, and African world. Nubian played a very big, important role in the shaping of the world, even about what was going on in the Middle East in the days of, of old. Uh, Nubia is the house of very powerful great rulers, including people like Amenishako and Candace Queens. They were both powerful people that stood up against the Greek and the Roman empires. Uh, Nubia once stood up against the, the Greeks when um, Alexander was trying to invade, and um, Nubia once stood up against Augustus Caesar during the time of um, of Abenishako. And uh, it's also the house of a very great king known as Shabaka. I don't know if the Sudanese guys here have heard of him. Uh, he's one of those kings that used to protect the old, uh, he, he was also, he was the king that united the upper and lower Egypt. And when we say upper, we mean Nubia, not, not Egypt. Uh, Egypt was the lower, and it's the map now that shapes the old things up, upside down. But the old maps used to place the north to be what we know as um, um, Africa. Nubia was that very great, powerful um, warrior nation that used to protect all Jerusalem from invasion from the Assyrians, especially during the days of Hezekiah. And um, we know of a very great. Um, King then, um, 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 Shebiktu, who, who was very powerful. And if you look at books, uh, in the Bible, such as Isaiah 37 9, Second Kings 19 9, you will see the roles that the Nubians played a lot in, in protecting Jerusalem from Sennacherib, one of the most powerful Assyrian kings of that time. But of recent, Nubia, uh, Sudan, has become a place of exploitation because the influence of jihadists. As we can know, most of the people that become fundamentalists fundamentalist in the world today got their trainings from Sudan. It used to be the haven at some point for a man like um, Osama bin Laden, and it used to be the haven for a lot of Fulani people that went there, that sent their people there to learn how to be activists. So people like the old central bank governor of um, Nigeria, known as Sanusi Lamido, 
at one point went to Sudan. A lot of people from the north were sent to, to Sudan to train on how to be core Muslims. And they were a very important part of what David exposed to us as the Izala movement. So now, I'm sure our Nubian brothers will be able to explain to us why Southern Sudan needed to exist, because if Southern Sudan did not break away from Northern Sudan, they would have ended up in the same trouble that we are ending up now, because we, as Southern Nigeria, are in the same predicament as Southern Sudan. And Northern Sudan is like Northern Nigeria with the, with the Islamic uh, fundamentalists like we have in the North. Northern Sudan is not resource rich. Southern Sudan is where the wealth of Sudan used to come from. Same way the wealth of Nigeria comes from Southern Nigeria. And um, unfortunately, breaking away of Southern Sudan was not done the right way because it was allowed to bring in people that should not be part of Southern Sudan. And this is why there's still tension going on in Southern Sudan. So the question we're asking ourselves is that, should it be the Western world determining for us how to restructure our lands the same way they were able to restructure Southern Sudan, but they put people that should not have been a part of Southern Sudan into what we know as Southern Sudan today, and that is still causing a lot of tensions. We would let our Southern Sudan brothers enlighten us more, and we know that this is going to be a very powerful session, and we look forward to learning a lot from you guys. And I hope many of you and your friends will come up and enlighten us as the session goes on. Thank you very much. And I have yielded the mic. Uh, can people hear me? Yes, we can, Bunka. Thank okay. you so much, Mr. Bunka, for that. Um, Didi, the stage is yes. Please go ahead and usher us into this educational session. Ms. Didi, are you here? Can anyone hear I me at all? Yes, please. Yes, oh, I there you me. go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I just want to pass my greetings to you guys all, um, our brothers and sisters up here with us that have invited us to give an uh, to give our account. And uh, this is really a tremendous moment that you guys will get to learn about us more. And we we can't we couldn't really be humbled enough really to be here to speak about um, our issues and the struggles that we're going through. Um, and also, I want to pass my greetings to um, the audience and also some of our our members down there, our team members who are, will join us uh, shortly in different times. Um, also, uh, right now, I will just hand it back to uh, Odysseus, who is um, one of our, you know, our team members, and um, he can take it over from here. Thank you, guys. So we want you to give us a session of why there was a need for Southern Sudan. What was the reason that led to the to the determination that you wanted to break away from Northern Sudan and the details involved? Can, is that something that can be shared with us? Absolutely. Yes. Go okay. Ahead. Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry, Didi. You want to say something? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I thought she was. I thought she was asking me. So because we have structured ourselves on who is handling who. So that's why I've, I've yelled it back to you so that we can go in, in, in terms of how we organize ourselves. Thank you. All right, I appreciate it. And first of all, I want to say thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, our brothers and sisters uh, from Nigeria, I really appreciate you for bringing us here uh, to talk about our issues, our cases, uh, as uh, people from Great Equatoria uh, region who are now calling for secession. And we are very determined and very focused and and, and we are uh, prepared for for this independent inshallah and accordingly or god willing because we believe that uh Ikatoria deserve it and we have a historical also evidence back us up that Ikatoria was not part of south sudan or not part of sudan in general uh we used to be known uh anciently by Ladu Inklif, but 
going back and I, I don't I will give the the history to Mr. CJ, but uh, just point of why Sassanese call for independent from North. Uh, this thing is goes back also to uh, identity and uh, based on identity. When I say identity, because in the North they define themselves to be Arabs, and that was the first problem that triggered after the independent when south sudan i mean when sudan joined the arab league at that moment uh sudan declared that they are arab i think it was azhari if i'm not mistaken the president uh who joined the arab league and that played a role of uh playing that you know they, they want to deny our identity as africans and plus also there was uh you know the religious fraction i won't say it's problem because we have south sudanese who are muslims and who are christians so we are multi different you know we have different uh, you know religions there but the most difficult thing that uh people from south could not accept which was the identity that to be defined as arab so they want to eliminate our african heritage and and history in in the way of calling us arabs and for us we were also treated as second class citizen in the north so there was so much uh uh, you know, uh, injustices, so, you know, inequality that was created against our people in the South. And that's what the South really felt we are marginalized. So we decided we have to go against uh, the unity of Sudan and go for our own way. And this is the first time that South Sudanese began to look for independence. So there is a lot of heroes. Uh, we can go back even to Agri Gadeng and some other people who late, most of them are gone, uh, up to Joseph Loco, who's still alive, live in England. And we pray for his long life to continue because this man have uh, done great, but he was betrayed at the end. But yes, yeah, Sassanese were focused on keeping their you know identity alive because we were being treated, mistreated as in the North, we are not equal. And we are looked as Africans beneath them while the others who believe that they're Arabs, they are superior. And it's, it's really a racial thing, an identity thing in the same time, while South Sudanese then, that's what it called, they called for separation. Thank you. Um, what, the next thing we want you to explain to us is how did you end up to be part of what we call Sudan? Because what exactly you're going through in Sudan is exactly what we're going through in Nigeria. There is a, a certain class of people that we know as the Fulani people. They, they, they are, they are not. They are Afro-Semitic people. They are not Africans. Uh, they, they are more linked to the Arab world than they are linked to the black, uh, to the Negro, or let me say the, the Niger Congo world. And so, for some reason, we ended up becoming a part of a country with them, even though before the British arrived, we've been fighting so hard never to have anything to do with them. But because the British is very disrespectful to ethnic identity, they're very, very disrespectful to the, the wishes of natives, they decided to merge us with people that we, on the normal normal course of life would never want to have anything to do with especially these um Fulani people and um what they were even before the british arrived is what they are today so even though we share a country with them they're still they still believe that they're superior race in fact if you look at the way they think in nigeria today they have a born to rule mentality they look at us as people that should never rule over them but the wealth of our country comes from us. They don't bring anything to the table. They don't have any wealth. If you look at how the wealth is created in Nigeria, they contribute the, the negative part of it. But if you look at the way it's distributed, they take the lion's share of it. If you look at the people that make Nigeria proud in terms of education, in terms of innovation, in terms of investment, they contribute zero, near zero. In fact, there's only one person or a few people from the north that create wealth in Nigeria. And the wealth they create is artificial wealth. What do I mean by artificial wealth? They do not compete in a competitive environment. They compete in a way where they go to the government and the government helps them to exploit the south, to make them 
create their wealth. An example of someone like that is a man called Dangote. So outside Nigeria, he's not been able to be successful in places like Tanzania, in places other places like West Africa, because they do not give him the same monopoly status that he gets in in um in um in Nigeria. So this is part of the things that we call the paradox of of dual colonialism. One colonialism from England and then one colonialism from, from the from the Fulani people. They still look at us as a people to be conquered. They still look at us as a people to be exploited. And that is why Nigeria, with all the potentials that it, it could have, is one of the impoverished places in the world today, where the commentator that was talking about his virus situation is talking where people would rather die trying to escape from Nigeria than to remain in a country like Nigeria. So we want to know. How did you end up becoming part of Sudan? Is it part of a decision you made? And how is the exploitation going on? And why is it so hard to now break away and become your own country? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll think I'll give it this to CJ. Mr. CJ, you can go ahead and uh, answer. And maybe later I can, if there's anything, I can also add on it. Go ahead, Mr. CJ. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. I can't pronounce your name. Uh, Bo Go Gobenke? Yes, Mr. it's Boka. <laughs> it's Boka. <laughs> Boka, okay. All right, thank you. All right, All right. So, thank you very much, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, our brothers uh, uh, who are now in the podium. Uh, sorry, before you go, I want to say I'm going to put the hand raising on, but I want only people from Sudan to come up for now, from Southern Sudan. We will open it for everybody later. Thanks. All right. Uh, you mean Equatoria or all South Sudan? Sorry. South Sudan, because we want to have a balanced um, balanced um, exposure to, this, to history. Oh, yeah, I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Yeah. Well, to start with, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you know that, you know, of course, we are all aware of what had happened to Africa. Uh, the invasions of the Europeans to African continent that later lead to a disaster, human rights violations, and more many things all over the African continents. Uh, badly, you know, we have been, we were, as Africans, we have been used in what's so called the Europeans' war you know, to fight. And then in return, we got the independence. Most of our African countries got independence. So Sudan was one of that. So how comes, you know, based on what you have said, you know, what is the reason or what make uh, South Sudan become part of North Sudan? Yeah, it was exactly during these colonial periods that went on systematically, starting with First, the explorers to the White Niles, the European explorers, who get to the country from Zanzibar and all that until they reach all these areas of Sudan and South Sudan today. So as things goes, uh, we all of a sudden, you know, we find ourselves, of course, under the colonial world when, when uh, when the Europeans managed to take over Sudan, you know, of course, the Sabari before that was the Turkish. Turkish were there, were the first people to come to Sudan. And then they conquered Sudan. And then uh, by then, you know, Europeans were their allies. So they managed to control the entire country. So we went through that ordeal of being conquered by, by the Turkish. All right. And then Baker was one of the Turkish. Of course, Baker was in Africa as an explorer, but you know he got used. He becomes a governor of Sudan, of South Sudan. So the man play his roles of bringing all these areas together. They were just territories, of course. Remember, as Africans, you know, the way how we were living is totally different. We were kingdoms. We were ships. You know, each and tribes. Each, each tribe do use to respect the others. 
if there's at all any conflicts, you know, we used to settle it in the minor. So when the time, by the time when, again, of course, Baker comes Gordon there. After Gordon, Gordon, when Gordon, Gordon got killed, that was the time when British interfered and took over the country, you know, using the Egyptians. Egypt, by the time, was under Turkey. So that is, it was a kind of retaliation because of the Gordon death. Gordon was killed, of course, in Khartoum. Mahdi, a guy by called Mahdi, that was one of the Islamic scholars who came to South Sudan, particularly to the area of Darfur. He was a teacher. The guy was just only a teacher. With the pressure, with the pressure of the Turkish pressure of taxes and all that, comes up Mahdi. Mahdi was a product of the, that teacher, that Arabic teacher, Al Mahdi, Muhammad Sayyid. His name was Muhammad Sayyid. So his sons lead the revolution against the Turkish. When, you know, as time goes, of course, they manage to defeat Gordon and kill Gordon. So comes British. Of course, British were not even, uh, they were not happy about that because they called Gordon to leave the country. It's unfortunate Gordon wouldn't leave the country. He saw what was going on there, those slave trades in the area. So then comes the, comes the Europeans and took over South Sudan, South Sudan, the entire country. You know, they took it over from the revolutionary Mahdi. Mahdi conquered, you know, con I mean, defeat Gordon in 1885, since 1885 to 1889, the British took it back from him, from, from them, from the Mahdi. Mahdi was a kind of, of course, Islamic rebels. They call them Darwish. Darwish are people who believe in God, of course, they, they are Muslims. So they believe, they believe in uh, Islamic religions, uh, their own religions. So they, when they killed Bahdi, British took over. When they took over, the country became, there was a documentation that was given to Kochner. Kochner was the one who took the, the leaderships, of course. When he opened that letter, there was a letter there that, you know, once you get there from Queen Victoria, once you get to that area, once you conquer, or that means when you defeat, defeat Mahdi, please open this paper, this letter. Then he went on opening the letter. The point is that, you know, the letter was showing that, you know, you, you need to conquer the entire area of South Sudan today, which is Ikatoria. So with that, you know, they managed, of course, after all, they took over the area and combined it together. Now it becomes South Sudan, it becomes Sudan, the country of Sudan. We combine of Equatorial area, Equatorial lands, and the Sudan today. You know, after the divisions, of course, the Sudan today. Then the, all, the two countries become one country, all right, under the condominiums rule. In 1956, we managed to get independence. We were all, of course, the area was from all from Egypt to South to Sudan, we were under the conquer of the British. Then by the time Sudanese were asked whether they wanted to be part of Egypt, together with Egypt or not. Of course, Sudan, we can start from South Sudan today, or Equatorial area, up to Egypt. So those areas are now under the occupations of European occupations. So over there, there's a man, the, in, uh, <clears throat> the, the sons of Mahdi, the Mahdi the revolutionary, you know what Mahdi is? Mahdi means the one who will come after Muhammad, if anyone were to, is aware of Islam. So this guy went on, his insisted his sons went on, who's called Mahdi, he has already passed away some, uh, let's see, last, last, uh, some months ago in, by, by Corona. So the guy says, okay, we don't want, we want it to be a separate state. Then after a long fight, definitely they managed to get South Sudan. South Sudan, Sudan which combines Sudan and South Sudan. The two countries become one country, one united country, under six provinces. Three of them was nine provinces. Three of the provinces was in South Sudan. That was how we become one people. 
by the time, if you look to the structure of the country by the time, the Egyptians managed to control the north part. The British managed to control the south part of the country. British, the north parts began to uh, uh, in, implement the idea of recruiting, I mean, turning that country into an Arab country, an Islamic country, teaching Arabic and, and, uh, and Islam. British in South, through the missionaries, of course, they were missionary, a missionary by name, Komboni, you know, they were, they start teaching the South Sudanese or the Equatorians to, you know, in a, preparing them to be a British speaking country with, with, with respecting with respect to their tradition and everything's in the country and they're all tribes so that was what it happened that was what brought south sudan and sudan into a one country it was actually uh let's say it was the the queen victoria intentions that the entire nile valley has to be conquered so that you know you remember if you go to uganda today there is of course you know the, there is british have already they have foothold in that country you know with victoria uh, lake victoria and all that you know that's what that's when all this come up to a play so that's briefly what i can say about that now probably the other question is that you know the reason behind our call for if what to add you know what Attica have added the reason behind our call for an independence and as equatorial one of the most strongest reason is that you know the land our land is now almost an occupy area today after the independence you know we become to feel began to feel that you know these an invasions you know by the time when spla of course there were numerous warring fractions during the civil war of Sudan, the longest, the long, longest African civil war, you know. By the time on those, when we reach an agreement, the CPA, which is peace, uh, comprehensive peace agreements, in 2005, everything became okay with us. All of a sudden, SPLA was given uh, the hands to come in to the country. What happened is that, you know, in the state of, you know, of course, by then, South Sudan was already holding as three regions. That goes back to what called, you know, a fight of decentralization fight. There was a decentralization fight between ourselves by the time, because Yalaba used the Dinka, the Dinka tribes, which are which are called Jaliin, they were north, they were all almost a northern tribes who make who managed to get to the to the area of South Sudan during the colonial time, of course, during the in slavery times. Because of slavery, they become an immigrants in the in South Sudan today. Like an immigrant. So where were these Dimkas originally from? Uh, they are from North Sudan. They call Jaliin. They came from Jalin and Shagir. There are tribes called Jalin and Shagir in North Sudan. They were there. Then, you know, of course, during the slavery, people have to escape. You know, during the slavery, people during the Mahdi time, Mahdi. Remember the Mahdi I told you about? During that period of time, they were given hard time. There was no way out, they have to run south. Mainly, they were mainly, uh, most of them were naked. Excuse me for that. They were naked by the time when they got to that area. And they located their locations was Upper Nile, one of the three South Sudan regions, which is Equatoria and, and Bahar Ghazal, and then Upper Nile. In, Bahar, in Upper Nile, they were there. Even during the, the British conquer to reconquer Sudan, Dinka were being mentioned yeah, they were just limited. Very, very few of them were, were just only in Upper Nile area. That's what it is. Now, again, going back to the reason why we become independent. As I've said, one point was that the land. The Dinka have been used by the Jalaba when we become, you know, 
during the self-autonomy. We were having a self-autonomy in 1972, you know, during the civil war of South Sudan. That was the first civil war, which goes from 1955 to 1972. At that particular period of time, okay, we were given self-autonomy. You know, we were given self-autonomy after a long fight, of course. That self-autonomy, the one who, the guy who lead us to that self-autonomy is Joseph Lago, Joseph, General Joseph Lago. By the time when he came there, he was supposed to be the leader. I mean, the High Executive Council, the Transitional High Executive Council of South Sudan, and the second, the, the vice president, the second vice president of the Republic of South of the Sudan. It is unfortunate. He was not given that chance. He was given two options. He was, he was given two options that he won't be able to take over those two positions. He need to get at least one of them. Either it has to be his people, uh, general army, leaving the other position of uh, vice president to someone else. So Lagu went on to his colleagues, debate with them, and talk through it. Yet, you know, the, the main point, they end up that, you know, we should have our own, you know, you're better off, you are better off to take the leadership of your people. Don't put the, uh, the uniform down. That means, you know, because he was in uniform. He was recruited, he become now, he become part of the Sudan's army. That was also a long discussion that happened to be settled by Emperor Haile Selassie. Because during negotiations, the, the first agreement of the Addis Ababa agreements of 1972, the, main, the critical point was whether or not Joseph Lagu, General Joseph Lagu rebels, will have to be recruited and become part of Sudan army or not. All right? So, then it's so, taken... yes, uh, sorry, sorry to cut it. There was an Addis Ababa agreement, but it was reversed by President Gafan Nimeri, right? It has, never... in no, it, has never, it has been it has never been reversed, but violated. There was a violation okay, because in, right. in 1972 agreement, yes. after five years, South Sudanese South Sudanese were supposed to go to Addis Ababa, return to Addis Ababa to decide their destiny, whether or not if they wanted to, to become an independent country or not, all right? So it's unfortunate, of course, during that time. Nimeri, imagine, as I've told you, know, that Nimeri used the Yaliin, the Dinka, you know, to hold on to the country as the, the president, the, the state president, as the best president of the, the, the nation. So his position is more higher than the general. Understand? The general in the South Sudan was supposed to take, as I've said, I'll repeat myself again, he was supposed to take the position of general and the vice president, second vice president of the North Sudan, of the Sudan. Yet he was, he was just limited into a general. The reason why those people, the Yaliin, had played a big role of destroying the self-autonomy. You know, as to how is that, you know, the guy by name Abel Alier went on and took over. He took over the entire, the entire positions of the self-autonomy. It was by then the high executive president of South Sudan. And at the same time, he took over also the, 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 the police department. The police department was one of his own. So there was a game down there being played to an extent that Equatorians find themselves isolated or marginalized without any positions, any specific positions or ac actions. So then, you know, there were two tribes, two tribes, the Equatorians and those Yaliins get into a conflict. That conflict raised attention to Nimeri, you know, to take over and says, you know, to decide to come with the decree that, you know, South Sudan has to be divided into three states. He went on dividing South Sudan into three regions, where every region has to govern itself, all right, with, the, with, with its own capital. For instance, Equatoria, capital was Juba. 
Upper Nile, capital was Malakal, called Malakal. When you go to Bahar Ghazal, capital was Wow. That was how things work out. And every one of us was satisfied. It's unfortunate that, it's unfortunate by the time those guys, the Dinka, were not happy about these divisions. Then they began to claim that that is the divisions of the country, that, that Nimeri wanted to divide us. No, it was a bill that been forwarded to Nimeri by Lago in the earlier times. Nimeri went on turning it down. When the, 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 the two tribes get engaged in the problems, just only the market, normally, trying to do some business in the business days, suddenly Denka was occupying the, the entire things, the entire business. You know, they don't want to give any, the Equatorian tribes, any chance to work it out, to, for instance, to invest or do any business. So these particular tribes, of course, the Mundari, went on fighting that. That is when Nimeri stepped in and settled it in that minor. Now, I will end up that later, what, in 1983, that is the, the conflicts of 1983 or the SPLA liberation movement. I will end up here. I'll give it to my, one of our colleagues. He will carry, up, carry it from here. All right. So in, in, in conclusion, the reason why we wanted to separate is that the same issues that we were facing in Sudan during the United Sudan, if we put it that way, United Sudan, North and South, during that United Sudan, all these factors have played now, is now playing a role in South Sudan, with the exception of two points. One of them is that the occupation of land occupations, it is start with grabbing the lands step by step, and then ending to, to uh, you know, holding the lands, you know, occupying, tanking, taking it. We have an area in Namule that those, those Dinkas, those colleagues of ours, the Dinkas, came and went down there. And they were supposed to get one there in time of war, during the Civil War, the first Civil War. They were supposed to go back in 1983. I'm sorry. That's in 1983. Of course, uh, like I said, I'm sorry. I don't have to jump there. I say it's my colleagues who carry it from here, then, you know, we'll tell you the reason why also this will contribute in one of the reasons that we're now calling for independence or the independent of Equatoria or cessation of Equatoria in a way or another. All right. Yeah. So the most strongest is of our land. Our land is, of course, without land, you are nothing. Land and identity. Remember, now we are not satisfied. There's no government at this, at this particular time. The government that took place over there, there is a coup. It's like, you know, taking over. Those Dinkas have played a role of taking over after 1983 uh, independent, uh, 1983 uh, 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 rebel movement of SPLA, which is led by a, a guy called John Garen, Dr. John Garen. So I'll end up here. And we'll add some of this in, in, any, you know, in, in the time to come. Thank you, guys. Sorry for prolonging. And all line up here. All right, this is you can take it from there or any of any of us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, CJ. Um, we we are trying to look at the parallels between the Sudan situation and um, um Nigeria situation. And at some point, I would like someone to tell us um about um Gafani Mary because I know that he was responsible for destroying what was put on ground, because I believe he came as a military head of state. Um, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm a, Emmanuel will come after. I will give him the, the floor, but yeah. we just want to. The, the intention to of this session is because we want to learn from experiences across Africa and so that we can know how to work together as friends. So um, now, one of the situations is that when Nigeria started out as well, Nigeria started out as a as a as a parliamentary structure that gave a lot of respect to the blocks, and it it, it greatly helped by with making regions to be able to develop at their pace, and it respected ethnic identities and the right for ethnic identities to be able to create a a country of their own. But now somebody came in and messed all that up, and his name was Muritala Mohammed. And I'm uh, I'm trying to compare Muritala Mohammed 
with Kafan and Mary and to see the roles they played. Because if you look at Muritala Mohammed, uh, he also wanted to kind of cleverly Islamize Nigeria, but he was doing it from a very underground way, in a way where people did not know what that was, what was going on. So he he would introduce Nigeria into OIC, um, um, introduce the position of the Grand Mahdi, um, create a kind of Islamic agenda that he was trying to package into a constitution, but he was not able to succeed because he died before he all those things could come in place. And the person that took over after him was a Christian. So he, <coughs> even though he was into the, the, the Fulanization agenda, so to speak, he, he was not into the Islamization agenda. So that that's told some of the things they were trying to do at that time. So um, we would like you to talk about Gafar Nimeri at some point. We would like you to talk about why they decided to change the structure in place that gave the Equatorial Guineas their right to their ethnic identity. And we would like you to talk about if there was an intention to exploit them and to make them second-class citizens in their ancestral home, the way we're being made second-class citizens in our ancestral homes in southern part of Nigeria today. Thank you. Um, thank you, Bonker. Um, I'm, I'm assuming because you said Emmanuel. Okay, uh, uh, Emmanuel, before you... Uh, yeah, so uh, Bunker, as uh, you gave me the chance to speak, yeah. I will I will take my my chance and uh, I will interject a couple of uh, uh, you know historical facts uh, regarding South Sudan, uh, so that we could put uh, our discussion tonight on on, uh, on perspective. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank you, uh, thank your colleague for hosting us and uh, to discuss these pertinent issues that are concerning us in in South Sudan. Uh, and concerning Africa as large. Uh, as a continent, uh, we have been going through a lot of things uh, since uh, the ancient times. Uh, up to now, we are still feeling the pain of the Berlin Conference of 1884, where the colonies, the whites, decided uh, over whiskey and over dinner, over lunch, to, de to decide to uh, divide Africa as a continent uh, among themselves without putting any due consideration uh, to the tribal or to the nation making uh, within Africa. And by the way, before the coming of the whites to the Africa, Africa had no less than 10,000 kingdoms and chiefdoms. Uh, we existed, we governed ourselves harmoniously, uh, and we existed since the time immemorable. Uh, but of course, these discussions that we are having today uh, is, is, is a step forward. And I was listening uh, to my cousin, uh, uh, Professor Lumumba. When I said cousin, you were wondering how is Lumumba cousin to Emmanuel from South Sudan. Uh, Lumumba and myself, we come from uh, uh, a nation called the Luos. Uh, the Luos, uh, we are found uh, in Sudan. We are found in Ethiopia. We are found here. Sorry to cut in, Emmanuel. Are the Luos? Luos are people that the uh, the the um, Kenyans don't like. The way Nigerians don't like um, Igbo people because of their not, not, not really. In Kenya, it's the Kikuyus that people don't like because they're the ruling. They have been ruling the elites. Uh, the Luos yes, are those so of Raila. The Kikuyus, the Kikuyus are the ruling class, but yes. the Luos are the business class. Right? No, 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 no. The the the, the Kikuyus, uh, the Kenyatta, Jumo Kenyatta, the father of Uhuru. Uh, yes. He was he was, he was a Raila Odinga. Raila yeah, Odinga, Raila, is, Raila Odinga is, the, is the opposition, and his father Odinga before him. They have never been to power. Uh, yeah, but they are the Luos. Yeah, they're the Luos, but the power has been in the hands of Kikuyu, including the economy of the country. But anyway, yeah. But the point I, I just wanted to make is that the Luo of Kenya, which of Raila Odinga come from, and those of Professor Lumumba. Uh, we 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 come we, we we call ourselves the Luo, but we have many nations within it. Uh, in South Sudan, we have almost six tribes. Uh, we have the the Shuluk, we have the Achuli, we have the Pari, uh, we have the the the, the, the Luo Bar Ghazal, we have Balandabor, and we have others. Uh, in Uganda, you have Achuli, uh, you have Lango, 
uh, you have uh, Padola, uh, the same thing, you have a Luri in uh, Lake Albert in Zaire, and then you have also Luo in Kenya, Luo in Tanzania. But you see what I'm trying to see, I'm just trying to make a footnote on the tragedy of Africa, that uh, you could have uh, I in the middle of north of South Sudan related uh, to the person who is uh, extreme to Tanzania and we are relatives, but yet uh, the, because of demarcation uh, of, the, of the whites and how they divided our continent, uh, we are now, you know, different people in different countries. Uh, leave alone that, if you look at Africa itself, even the word Africa, where does it come from? Because if you want to change things, uh, we should even change the word Africa itself, uh, because Africa uh, or are free come from the a small tribe of Berber after they were conquered they were conquered by the by the Roman in the year uh, 149 BC uh, you see in the year 149 BC uh, Carthage was a thriving uh, thriving uh, city they were doing well in terms of agriculture uh, the same jealousy that the Western world do have today uh, in 19, in, in, in the year 152, there was a man, a senator, a Roman senator called Marcus, uh, Marcus Procius Cato. Uh, Marcus Procius Cato, uh, he was a known senator who hated the Carthaginians. He didn't like it too much uh, racial tendency and also jealousy. And he also wanted to destroy Carthage. So what did he do? In one of the occasions, in the Senate in Rome, uh, he came up. Uh, he came up uh, to the to the Senate uh, with the with the a ripe fruit, uh, a ripe fruit, a fig fig uh, fig tree. They have the ripe fruit of the fig, and he showed it uh, to the Roman colleagues. And he said, "Do you know where this comes from?" And people are wondering. He said, "This fruit is only three days old and is still fresh. It comes all the way." from Carthage. So I'm presenting to you that if Carthage continues to prosper, they will pose an immediate threat to the Roman Empire. And hence, Carthage is a dangerous place for us and pose a danger to the Roman expansion and Roman ideas, and it must be destroyed. That is why in the year 149 BC, the Roman army sailed from North Africa and seized Carthage. For nearly three years, for nearly three years, the Carthaginian hold held out. You know, they sealed off their food supplies. People were starving. The final assault to Carthage came in 1946. Okay, for came in 1946 when the Roman attacked Carthage. Uh, they 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 decided uh, to burn houses. A house to a house was burned. The slaughter men women and children okay uh emmanuel a seconds please uh guys we've been getting a lot of back channel messages some can't access the room so please how we normally do it um uh, we don't mod our guests so we can be in control of the room because we also understand how this self-determination thing works so please i i plead that you guys can should adjust to us so that people can access the room because uh, uh, a lot of people have yeah. been blocked we know how this thing works so yeah yes but so so to make sure that sorry guys to make sure that i'll uh, bring you guys up almost immediately yeah we want to make sure we bring everybody down so that other people can get into the room and i will bring everybody back up again thanks Yeah, hello. Yeah. Uh, 
hello. Uh, I just wanted to announce that we are having a technical issue now, uh, but uh, we will be back uh, very soon. Uh, we really highly apologize. Your story, what's your name, Africa? Coming back now. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, everybody. Apologize for the break in the uh, communication there so we just want to get everybody back um if you were on stage before we we'll try to bring everybody back but please raise your hand again so that i've invited a number of them um people who were on stage um back up stage please so uh... okay uh, uh uh please uh queen you can also demod me please so we have very less uh, Okay, so sorry, Miss, are you are you um who was the, who was speaking earlier? Um, I think Emmanuel. Emmanuel yeah. Him. Uh, Emmanuel. Okay, I can't see Emmanuel here. He's in the first line, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, please raise your hand so that we can get you back on. Just the two people, get out and Emmanuel. They should be up in the first uh, line of the. People okay, I've sent invitation to get. Uh huh. Okay, Manuel is back up. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. So should I continue because my my train of thought is being interrupted here, so I don't know. Uh, okay. So should I continue, or are you still arranging the room and proceed? No, continue. continue now. Continue. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. About yeah. Thank you. So basically, uh, I don't know if my last point I made was clear uh, in terms of that. If you want to change things in Africa in my opinion, we should even start thinking of changing the word Africa itself because from the small uh, uh, dose that I gave the footnote about how Africans became to be called Africa after the defeat of the Carthage and the Romans celebrating the conquering of African and slaughter of the innocent women and children, they call it Afri or province in Afri. And Afri is a section uh, of, of Baba uh, tribe that was residing in Carthage. And yet we are yet still calling ourselves African. So you could see how we in Africa, we is really a big dilemma, even after, you know, many centuries have passed. Now, let me come to the issues regarding my country, South Sudan. Uh, it is important because when we start talking about the right of self-determination and the criteria set up, uh, set out in the right of self-determination, and uh, we need to see that what we are discussing will fall into that context of the right of self-determination. Uh, someone talked earlier and gave an historical narrative, I think it was CJ uh, on South Sudan. Uh, yes, some of it uh, was accurate, but some uh, I think need to be, to be corrected. Uh, I will start with the correction first before I go to the historical aspect. Uh, the Dinka, whom my brother uh, CJ alluded to and calling them that they are brothers to Jalin and Shaigir, uh, and that they came uh, during the Mahad escaping slavery, that's not absolutely true. It is incorrect. Uh, the Dinkas are nilotic uh, group. The, their physique, their language is not the same with Shaigia or Jaalin. Jaalin and Shuaiga, they're Arabs. Uh, they're Arabs, so their language is Arabic. So Dinka has nothing to do with it. And to say that is after Mahadi, Mahadi came in 1881. Uh, the Dinkas have been in South Sudan way earlier than that, maybe 200 years. So it's not true that the Dinkas are Jalin. Dinkas are not Arab, they're Nilotic. They fall into what we call the Northern Nilots. Uh, so they're not, they're not Dinka, they're not, they're not Arabs. Uh, these are things I also wanted to correct. The other thing is the Kotoria. Uh, is the two tribes he mentioned, they say the Kotorians and the, and the Jalin, they fought on the redivision and divided South Sudan and Emeri granted that. Equatoria is not a tribe. Equatoria is a province that is consisting of 34 tribes. Uh, this is just a correction I would like to make. And let me go on. Uh, let me continue. Now, uh, the issue of the Lado, Lado enclaves. Uh, you see, my dear brothers and sisters, perhaps who are not southern Sudanese. Sudan, as you know today, came into existence after the Turkish or the Udman Empire conquered in 1821. Before that, Sudan was known by different names and people existed as different nations, you know? But when the geographical Sudan that we know today 
uh, and the Sudan that we know today uh, came to be in existence in 1821 when the, the last kingdom of the Funj Sultanate of Bade Abu Shalouk the Sixth uh, surrendered to the to the to the Ottoman Empire, and then hence uh, Sudan became part of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, of course, saw so Sudan to the relevancy of it. Uh, during the Ottoman Empire of 60 years of the Sudan or less, uh, Sudan was subjected, people of South, Sudan, of South Sudan in particular, and other parts of the Sudan, uh, Nuba Mountain and Ingasina, was subjected to slavery. Uh, it's, it's slavery because slavery was one of the reasons why the Ottoman came and conquered uh, Sudan. They wanted to use slave uh, in their armies. So uh, slave, slavery uh, became uh, you know, the business of the day uh, in that areas that we know as South, uh, South Sudan or Southern Sudan at that time. Uh, the European forces were getting concerned and the allies to Ottoman Empire regarding the slave trade. Now, the Ottoman Empire, uh, they decided uh, to hire uh, people to govern uh, some part of South Sudan uh, especially the area of Equatoria. So South Sudan had three provinces. You had the Upper Nile province, you had Bardazal province, and you had the Equatoria province. Uh, the Ottoman Empire, the first person that they hired uh, to govern uh, the Equatoria province, which was part of Bardazal at that time, uh, was uh, Sir Samuel Baker. Samuel Baker became the governor of Equatoria in 1869. Uh, of course, he was uh, hired by the Ottoman authority. Uh, when, uh, sorry, when in he, he was time, British, right? Huh? Soma Beta was a British man. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was a British man. So even if, even Sir Gordon was British too, you know. So what happened? The the Ottoman Empire, because they had a good uh, relations with British, they used to hire some British administrators to come and rule on their behalf as their you know, as, as they are, as they are, what do you call it, as their governors. So what happened in this case, because the British were concerned about the slave trade in, in southern Sudan at that time, uh, they convinced the, the Ottoman uh, to, to, to stamp out the slave trade and decided uh, to appoint uh, Sir Samuel Breaker in 1969 as the governor uh, of, of, of Equatoria. Uh, and then you said uh, 1969. The, it was the late 1800s. It's 1869. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, 18, 1869 precisely. Uh, so Samuel Baker uh, formed his headquarter administration in a place called Gondokoro. Now, when when Samuel uh, and then he managed to suppress the slave trade. Uh, after him, uh, in uh, in 1874. Uh, when Samuel Baker uh, left his post, uh, Sir Charles Gordon, uh, also British uh, general, was well known uh, in China and the rest by the British. Uh, Sir Charles George Gordon became the governor uh, of Equatoria in 1874. Uh, in 18, 1874, he became the governor and he moved the capital of Equatoria from Gondokoro to a place called Lado, you know, uh, to a place called Lado. Now, he only ruled for, six, for two years. Uh, 1876, there's a man called Amin al-Pasha. Amin al-Pasha. Hey, Mr. Manuel, yeah. just give me one second, please. Monka, can you please check your back channel? Thank you so much. I'm so sorry for interrupting. Please go ahead. Mr. Emmanuel, please go ahead. I'm sorry okay. for interrupting. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Charles, Charles, uh, Charles George became the second governor of Equatoria from 1876 to uh, 1874 to 1876. Uh, Amin Pasha took over after him, uh, and by 1881 he located uh, to 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 uh, to, to, uh, to uh, Gondokoro. Sorry, to uh, to Lado. And Lado became a big town of 5,000 Tukuls. Now, why is this important? This is important uh, because when we talk about Equatoria, uh, we need to know that which Equatoria are we talking about so that we could put the context of the right of self determination. Now, the Lado Enclave that many have been talking about, Lado Enclave is a, a strip of land 
that comprises uh, part of South Sudan, Western Uganda, uh, and some part of Zaire. When the British were building what they call the the, the Cape the Cape the Cape Town uh, rail railway, uh, they made they made a treaty with the Belgians for exchange of Lake Albert and Taganyika. So British will take Lake Albert and Taganyika to pass the, the roads to the Cape Town roads. And then in, in return, the Lado enclave or the, 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 the piece of land called Lado uh, is an enclave that was carved by the British from the Equatoria, will be given to the King uh, Leopold, Leopold of Belgium uh, for the period of his time. So if he dies, the area reverts back to, to the British. Uh, that was, and the agreement was signed. They negotiated and signed what they call the British Congolese Treaty. Uh, they signed it uh, on the 12th of May, uh, 1894, and they formed what they call the Lado uh, Inc. Okay, uh, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. uh, we will come back to you because okay. we want it to be balanced. So just I'm hang concluding. in there. I'm concluding. Yeah. I'm concluding. Let me conclude. Okay, because it is important for us to put the foundation, my brother. So later on, when okay. we talk about the right of self-determination, there are criteria. Yes, I'm, I'm right getting back-end messages. Yeah. Okay, well, well I, I think, I, I think yeah. in, the art, in the art of debates, uh, all of us uh, are patient. We have, we have listened also to those who came and talked. Uh, it is really just fair for them also to be patient and listen to others. Uh, this is democracy. Uh, so um, I, I'm concluding. So uh, what I'm trying to say is this. The Equatoria is just a province like Upper Nile and Bargazal. Now, when you start talking about the right of self-determination, right of self-determination was given to countries that were under colonization. Okay, uh, South Sudan is true. We demand the right of self-determination and we did exercise it. We did that because we were fighting Arab Islamic uh, you know, groups in the northern Sudan who are different from us. And that is why the people of Equatoria province, the people of Bar Ghazal and people of Upper Nile voted in the right of self-determination as one people. If Equatoria, for example, was a diff there were different people, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have had the right uh, to vote in the right of self-determination. Perhaps they would have only voted for the right of self-determination for Equatoria. So what I would like to submit to you tonight is that Equatoria is a province uh, within South Sudan South Sudan is composed of three provinces, Upper Nile, Equatoria, and Bar Ghazal. Now, if there is a group, of course, in, in politics is not, it's not, it's not a stagnant, it's dynamic. So if there is a group now that find themselves the one uh, to call for separation, because I'm hearing, I'm not hearing right of self determination, but outright separation, uh, it, is the, it, it is the democratic right. But let us uh, try to argue constructively and see the foundations of the right of self determination and whether it does apply to this. Uh, in case of Equatoria, as I said earlier, I'm a Luo. Uh, in Equatoria, you have tribes like Acholi, for example. They are my, we speak the same language. I'm more closer to them than, than Acholi and the Zandi, for example, or Acholi and Bari. They're not close, but I, I can speak to Acholi. They're my relative. Uh, you talk to Pari, which is, we call them Lango. They're in Equatoria, but they speak the same language with me in the northern part, in Upper Nile. You know, they're my people, you know. So are we questioning? The geographical demarcation of Africa. If we are doing that, then let us be honest among ourselves and say, okay, if that's the case, then let us go for a tribal self-determination. But when you start talking about regional self-determination and this geographical region you want to ascribe to was given to you by the same col uh, colonizers that you're objecting uh, against, then it doesn't make sense. That is, that is my submission and thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me just ask a question. Um... Do you believe in the right, and I think maybe you've answered it before, but I think it'd be good to just uh, clarify. Do you believe that every ethnic nation in Africa, no matter how small they are, are, and when I say ethnic nation now, an ethnic people who have uh, same culture, same uh, you know, way of life, that have lived in the land, are ancestral to that land. I mean, they're indigenous to that land, that they do have a right to self-determination as per the United Nations uh, Charter. And then the second question, the second question is, where do you stand in terms of um, your country at the moment? Um, in terms of 
if these people okay actually answer the first question and then maybe i'll be able to answer my next question and ask my next question after that one no thank you thank you sister uh, queen sheba you know right of self-determination uh, has its two connotations to it it has the legal and the political okay uh now when you talk about it from the political perspective i will tell you i believe in the right of self-determination that uh as you defined it you know be it uh, people with uh, defined territory uh, or, uh a stable population uh the the uh the, the i mean they could also enter into uh international relations with other countries yes okay for example you look at the issue of nigeria uh, nigeria i don't call yoruba for example, as a tribe, or you call Igbo as a tribe, because they are a nation unto themselves, or Fulani, or Hausa. They are actually nations. So let's say if, if, if Yoruba, you know, want to become independent, or let's say Igbo in Biafra, they want to bring back the idea of the Biafra, do they have the right? I will tell you yes, because there I one ethnic group. Yoruba is an ethnic, is a, is, is a nation among its, within itself. But now, if you tell me that uh, Yoruba, and, uh, and, and, and Igbo uh, should have a right of self-determination within, within the same, uh, having a, the same geographical uh, space, uh, forming a new country. Then the question becomes, what entitles Yoruba and Igbo to become one nation by themselves without the rest? You know, and that's the question, that is the, the legality of the right of self-determination. In case of South Sudan, I know the question you're trying to ask. In case of South Sudan, first of all, so Sudanese, we are not being ruled by any, 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 any other races. We are all Africans. We are all black as, as you could get, black you could get. Now, if it comes to ethnic diversity, even Equatoria, as we are talking about, demanding the right of self-determination, uh, Equatoria is composed of 30, more, more than 34 tribes. It's the most region in South Sudan that has more tribes than the province of Upper Nile and the province of Barbazal, you know? Uh, so what what will entitle, for example, is it is it is it is it because of geographical space called equatoria or because of ethnicity? If it's ethnicity, ethnicity is not one. There's no harmony in it. It's not in case of Yoruba or Igbo in Biafra. See, this is the thing I'm trying to get it. But as a principle, for those who have been oppressed and 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 as you put it, and uh, indigenous, I mean indigenous people of certain geographical space, yes, they do have the right of self determination. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think that's the. The bottom line, the last part that you said, I know somebody, I think oh, this might want to respond. Um, the last part of what you said, I think uh, that is that is very important. An indigenous people that are in uh, most of have a similar culture, language, and all that, and they they are connected amongst themselves, and they know that they have, because uh, you might also have a nation with different dialects. You know, um, but they all have common language that you they understand amongst themselves, right? That is a nation. Uh, so I understand what you're saying. Um, I think it's a great point. That last part is very important. That every, for me, they that, that every nation is allowed to be to have self determination. But also people have, do have different perspective today. So let me go to what oh, this is. Yeah. yeah. Um, Odyssey, so you wanted to respond to that. Go ahead. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, uh, uh, with all due respect, I say thank you, uh, first of all. And I, I kind of like expected this exactly what uh, Brother Emmanuel would say. And what I'm hearing from him, trying to put Lua, uh, we have Ecuadorian in uh, Lua from Ecuadoria. Uh, this really just does not justify uh, anything in his claim. I think he's trying to stand for unity. For what I see here, for us, separation is not about who are we related to. We can be cousins. It doesn't matter. It's our right. Like you said earlier, you believe and you respect in the human right of everybody's self-determination. Uh, you're trying to hold Lua as you kind of like trying to hold us as a hostage because there's Lua in Equatoria. I mean, Lua is everywhere, even in Kenya. So you can't just tell me because you, you have Lua here. Now you want to tell Equatoria, no, no, you cannot. And... Our separation is not justified. I don't know. Did you ever see the violence that is committed on, on our territories? We have been looking up in Upper Nile. There is no harmony there. And if you look, you wanted to tell that Equatorian are not harmonious. 
that is just wrong. If not this regime, that with all respect, you guys was once members to it, and now this regime have caused a lot of damage to Equatoria, would have not even been in this situation. Because I see you guys uh, very much, and I'll be honest with you, uh, you're in a position against the regime. And the regime is against you and against us. And I see you now, guys, from the opposition also against us. Because you don't want to see Equatoria to separate for some interest that you see. But for us, we never seen anything the opposition have brought in the table. Uh, so, sorry to cut in. Yes. Can you introduce yourself and let us understand where you're coming from? Yes, sir. you know we're from the outside, and yeah. Yes. Okay. My name is Odysseus. Uh, I'm from Great Equatoria region. And of course, we know uh, we have many tribes in Equatoria, and we are proud to call ourselves Equatorian. We never define ourselves in a tribe. Uh, I am from a small tribe in Equatoria, uh, but mixed with other tribes from East and Central. And, and western i mean west so, so uh, what what do you have in common a language a history oh no, we, we have different languages yeah. we, have, we have different languages our culture is very much intermingled with each other because our our people since the dawn i would say since the you know biblical time our ancestors have lived in harmony maybe they had fight but we don't see that fight that can cause into destruction of community like what's happening in upper nile uh for us equatorian we're very much uh you know, able to interact, you know, even the governing system that in the past, even when British, if you look at the colonialist reports and those things in archival for the and archival uh, evidence that can even back what we're saying, that these people, the community of Equatorian were most, you know, uh, able to govern themselves the way how Western was seeing, like, yep, even though they're not advanced in technology, but they knew how to govern themselves with their chiefs. Their chiefs were the, high, high, the, the highest power there where they can actually settle issues between uh, two tribes if there is any conflict. To, so, to, so, so sorry, sorry to cut in, Mystic. Uh, what do you mean by biblical times? I mean, remember, African, like for our people, okay, uh, Kushites, this is what we are known before, before we even called Nilatics or called uh, Africans or whatever, that's the people of Kush. So you, from, you are yeah. a Kushite? <laughs> yes, that's what we are known, Kushite, from, you know, even up and to... And you, you believe that Kushites are Africans? Mostly, yes. I mean, why? I mean, there is no oh, doubt on okay. that. Okay, no, just, just ask this. All yes, right. sir. Okay, right. We are all descendants of Kush. So even right now, if you look at Africa, we are all related somehow. We can say we're not, maybe we have languages, but still we're related, like how Europeans are related to each other and they speak different languages. But that does not mean that we cannot decide for ourselves when we come together and find the best way to, to live. But are Kushites from the Niger-Congo um, DNA block? Well, we don't, like if you want to talk about Kushite, okay, according to what we know historically and biblically, Kushite is supposed to be the south of, south, south of Sudan, I mean, south of Egypt. Okay, south of Egypt was known the kingdom, the Kush kingdoms. So those Kush kingdoms were there's so many tribes within them, many languages, and the big, the most powerful nations at that time was in Ethiopia, where they built their kingdom and have dominated. Even in Sudan, Khartoum, there is uh, tribes I forgot their names specifically, but those people were anciently have a history in 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 records, you know. Uh, so I don't have to go because I might not remember them, but I I, I know for a fact. Uh, there were some great leaders from Sudan uh, that were known to be that. But I want to get to my point here about Equatoria because I just said that we are all descendants of Kush. That's the, that's the most important known. If you want to even go farther, we are the descendants of Ham because we are Hamites. You know, that's according to what we know, that we are just Hamites. But now they gave us so okay, many uh, I'm sorry, Mystic. I'm a bit uncomfortable with this your biblical narratives. We don't think from a biblical point of view. No, we I think know. Okay, from my, right. Yes. I, so, I Ham, who is, who, who is, who, well, no, it's fine, it's fine. Who is Ham? Ham was the cursed son of, um, of Noah, right? Yes, he's son of yeah, Noah, of yeah, course. Ham was and son of Noah. I'm, 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 and I, and I don't know if, if, if his name... Name. Okay, go ahead, CJ, because I want to go ahead. I think, I think you know, mm -hmm. this, this shouldn't be an, an, an issue of arguments. All these things are in the Bible. You know, you, you you have just mentioned a few minutes that you know you in the Bible you gave us a verse in the Bible. So I don't think that's a point of argument. The main point is that you know Zikatoria. Yes. Yeah, so you see, the, the Bible was brought to Africa to cause confusion. 
So okay. if, 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 if we are embracing, uh, if you're embracing yourselves as the son of Ham, that means you're justifying everything the Europeans and the Arabs did to us. No, because no. I'm done. yes, I'm that, that's what you're doing, okay. and that's okay. that's a sensitive okay. one for me. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's from this Islamic point of view. Okay, that's the Islamic a, point, of, CJ, point of view. CJ. Can Hold you give me on. a chance, please? Let me answer this, and then because and now we're diverting from the point. Okay, if we don't agree, because like I said, there is a lot of people of different denominations. You can be Christian, Muslim, you can be atheist, you can be anyone who disagrees with the Bible or the Quran, or even disagree with atheists. But this is not the point here. My main point here is that we all believe that we are the sons of Ham. Maybe you don't believe in it. But if Africans could have a peaceful so nation, you can, you, we could, no, hold on. If we have a peaceful nation. That as a basis anywhere. for uniting people in Africa. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on one minute. Um, the, the Ethiopians came here, Let's see mostly him. the Amarans. Let's him laugh. Yes. No, no, please. Okay, all right, okay, Let's all right. Yes, points. yes please. Uh, can I just intervene? No, 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 not Speak. yet. Not yet, not yet. Someone was speaking. Odysseus, please Thank go. You. Thank point. you. Thank you, Ms. Queen, uh, Queen Shiva. I just want to say, let's, uh, we, we're not, that's why we don't have to get to religion here. But I want to mention one very important thing. Ecuadorians, they, their lineage, they know their history, they know their ancient people. And that's why I said, even we can go in the time or before the Bible itself. But regardless to that, that's not my point. I want to talk about the Bible. What I'm talking about is our people have been there in their land for centuries. They never took anybody's land. They just settled there and they built that society until we became today the new generation. Sorry, this was the last time I would interject. Well, oh, sir. Hold on, hold on one minute. Yes, this is the last time I'll interject. Oh, hold on, Queen, hold on, Queen. Uh, we are trying to debunk new colonialism. So on, on sessions like this, we don't want to... I'm really sorry, Bunka. This is not the time for that. When he finishes points, then we will have the opportunity to respond to. to Thank you very much. Thank you. Odysseus, go ahead. Uh, sorry, yes. can I say something, please? Uh, uh, can, did we, can we just can we get away from this? Uh, uh, hem, no, no, uh, sorry, hem, and those all these kind of things. Let's just go into direct to the topic and stick with it. I think we will all be fine. Or oh, let's talk okay. about the religion. Let's cut it here. Yeah, we, we can come back to that, but let's, uh, oh, this is just land your point. Okay, yeah. I, apo I apologize if I offended anyone. I really didn't mean to, but what I'm trying to say is that we, Equatorians, we know our no, ancestors. No, oh, this is, uh, excuse, yes, just a minute. You shouldn't yes, apologize. Uh, you are here to tell us what you guys believe, what we are here to listen to you, okay? So at the end, we can make our submission from what you guys think. We are not here to direct you or to teach you guys what you guys already are doing or something. So please, don't, you shouldn't feel free to, you know, tell us any perspective at which you guys have your belief. Then we understand exactly how we, what is going on over there. So don't be sorry, please. Thank you. Go Um, yes, thank you. So I just want to get, yeah, I want to get to my point because I want to respond to Mr. Ejewin. Uh, like I said, uh, most of the oppositions and the regime, they are not happy with Equatorian self-determination because we are people, we're not politicians, but we're very much aware. We have some people who are politicians that they support us, and yet they're not in any part of opposition or the regime. They are actually standing with the rights of Equatoria to self-determine because we have the same uh, gentleman, with all respect to you, Mr. Ejewin, you're the same person who said last time said that you guys, you know, your call for separation will be only in heaven. Uh, if heaven, I don't know, that was really, to me, it was disrespectful to the people who are dying under the tyranny, under the mistakes that you guys once were part and you'd be held accountable for. And I'll tell you how. You were held accountable because the first time when this country, we voted as a people of Greater Equatoria with the other two regions, believing that we are South Sudanese, you guys joined the regime without any question that this regime is supposed not to take over power, but they're supposed to go and collect the people and let's come and build a civil government. But you guys refuse to do that because you saw the opportunity to be in power. So most of you guys have joined it and even claimed it to be uh, you know, a government. And then when this honeymoon is over, a lot of people jump out of ship, left the regime and said that the regime have committed atrocities and violation. When were you guys there? Because Equatorians have been sitting 16 years watching. Even we blame some Equatorian leaders who failed us too in our right. 
especially when it comes to the point that you know Ecuadorian have been deprived from everything including political decision were not given uh there is only puppets like Waniga and Lomoro those guys have been used to destroy Ecuadorian SPLM from the start was the enemy of Ecuadorian and we still stated like that because SPLM is the reason why Ecuadorian today are suffering they were against us from the beginning even the tribal conflict that has started because of John Garang it was continued under this oppressive uh, way that they were doing and then some people now calling him hero but we call him a villain because the man have created an agenda to bring dinkinism in power and today people are trying to say no it's it's uh, selvaker but the whole we condemn a whole community that because their community have committed this and they never condemned the crimes that they committed in their name so ecuadorians have become victim to every policy to every uh, you know tricks and 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 conspiracies that committed either by the opposition or by the regime and this is why we stand against anyone who stand against ecuadorian right because we thought there is hope federalism the way how you try to define federalism you try to define federalism that everybody will go anywhere and live anywhere no we are tribes we have territories everybody respect territories everyone you know before when i remember the south sudanese coming to independent most of the people in upper nile claiming the oil belong to their tribes it doesn't belong to the country so now ecuadorians have so many minerals but never claim the the minerals belong to any tribe instead we say it's a national resource but apparently for us you don't even worry about this national resource we worry about the people because our people are the real national resource because we want great ecuadoria to gain the the opportunity to be a, a nation that is built on a civil you know like a civilian government no rebels no opposition that will be uh you know coming out to just uh you know uh interject i mean interfere in people right or into people decision we want a, a real uh society that you could even define it as an egalitarian society or a society even better than that democratic and process democracy and and human right right now they have been murdering our people for so many years and i remember i never seen a lot of you guys condemning these things happening even now up to date people don't even know that ecuador has a genocide happening in there and one tribe is committing this genocide by sending their militia you know people are even surprised when they talk is what is ecatoria i say ecatoria is part of uh, south sudan and we are a, a different region and yes we are tribes in that region but we are very proud to say we are one people because we never see ourselves as tribe the only problem now is happening the division that is being caused by the regime and by those who try to let ecatoria to be a follower because last time ayo the same thing did it like i mentioned earlier to you brothers uh before uh when we talked that the uh, SPLM 2013 uh SPLM caused the atrocity against the Nuer uh because they 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 justified it on 1991 and then they call it a coup while most of the community of Dinka never complained on this crime or called care to get out but instead people were still there some even even some people who now joined the opposition they were still in the group in the regime until the 2016 and what happened was of course you know Kir is a dictator he will he will choose whoever he want to choose and he will throw whoever want to throw and so people felt you know they have to be overthrown out of power and then that's when you see uh Selva Kir uh, you know begin to uh, the IO I mean under Riyak Mashar began to un- take you know undermine Ecuadorian by taking it as a tail now every time they want Ecuadorian to be followers we don't want to be followers in in, in our capital city even itself some people are objecting even to be there they want to move the capital to anywhere like ramshell that's what they claim they used to say in 10 years after the independent we will move the capital to ramshell they didn't move it instead they begin to 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 go deeper inside ecatoria into territories that never been seen by dinka today you could see dinka claiming it their territory and when we say this thing they call us we are we are tribalists but how many tribe are in there in ecatoria that are all complaining about this one tribe even in upper nile bahar ghazal they claiming and then you look at Bahar Ghazal, some of them, they want to say we are all suffering. No. So they, which, they, which they, tribe is that? Which tribe are you referring to? The tribe that is mostly known to be troublemaker is now Dinka. He's the one who's ruling the country, you know, because they are using a tribalistic method to over, uh, uh, you know, to occupy other people's land. Because right now what's happening in Ecuador is no longer a land grabbing. It's occupation and mass genocide and mass, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, chasing our people away. You know, from our territories up to Can, can you explain how this occupation happens? Let's okay, compare it to how it happens on our side. Yes, yeah. I'm coming to that. That's why I said 2013. 2013 opened the door to to the Dinkinism agenda to be to be uh, set set in 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 motion. 
What I mean is that uh, the SPLM have created this excuse of IO because when 2016, especially uh, after the second time they tried to assassinate Riyad Mashar and Riyad Mashar had to flee to Congo. A lot of Equatorians supported Riyad Mashar because they sympathized with Nuer for the genocide and they felt like they are they are in the same boat uh, in case of the, the human side that they are being killed, being marginalized and being threatened. But it wasn't that worse until they saw some leaders in Equatoria like Ladugore and others who joined the IO. That boat uh, brought the, the fire into our home. And I remember there's some Equatorian, including me, we spoke against that we join IO because IO does not represent it. This is a tribal conflict, but they didn't want to do that. They politicize it to the international community to act like there is nothing going on. It's just a political issues, uh, power, what do you call it, um, power struggle. But in reality, if you look at the hidden uh, agenda behind it, it wasn't power struggle. Yes, Nuer and Dinka were the most who are holding the military. Up to this moment, when they chased Nuer out, now Dinka are holding 99% of the army. And you could say that 99%. If that, the other ones are 1%. Those are just there to serve them in some impo important things. But most of these people who are, are armed to the teeth are from Dinka, and they are the ones who are now committing atrocity against the Equatorians and other territories, even including to Mr. Ajawin. His territory right now is being taken by Dinkas, calling Dinka Badan. They're trying to take over their territory. You know, and Thanks. these guys, yeah, these okay. guys have been, yeah. Okay, land your plane and then we'll come back to Emmanuel or someone else who's uh, on the other side. Go ahead, just land your plane. What's that again? I said if you can land your point and then um, then we can go take someone else. Can I, can I come in, Shiba? Uh, hold on, let Odysseus land because uh, he do need, I will just okay, let him. Like, I, I will land my point, but my point is that Equatorians are calling for self determination because it's a legitimate case. We have a genocide and abuse in our country and then we see both of these political uh, groups, if it was opposition or the regime, they all are, uh, you know, behind the, our misery. And I'll tell you for one fact is that they are not willing to even speak uh, on the issues of Equatoria. They are, they are always trying to say, Equatoria, yeah, we understand your issues. They will use us only for the time and they will overthrow us in the side, like what they did with IO. And today, Equatoria is paying the price. And so for us, we saw everything. We tried federalism. They didn't want it. We tried confederation. They're just making it an excuse. So everything they do is just to make them in power. And they want to use us. That's why I say Equatoria cannot uh, afford this time uh, to be used another time. This is the third time. And we have said it's enough, enough. We have to go for our self-determination. This self-determination will be by the people. And we know exactly how we're going to bring it. We're not going to bring it by the way some people are asking. Even some people mocking and say, you don't have army. Yes, there is a lot of method. Like Sassadan, how we got independent, we can get that independent the same way. But this time it will be by the people for the people. So I'll stand here for now. Thank you. Yeah, so, Mr. Charles would like to make some comments. Please keep back channel with me. Okay, CJ, you need to fix your mic. Yeah, CJ's mic is uh, funny. CJ, we'll come to you. I will take Charles. No, no, one minute. Just point just of clarification, you know, so that we know we're in I, pictures. Everyone okay. is in pictures. Maybe you'll be able to answer. I wonder, the... hold hello, on. ma'am. Hold on. Because hold on. he's a member. Uh, remember, uh, just uh, yeah, add one point. Huh? We are a member of the Equatorial Civil Action Council. Uh, that's what we are now doing uh, because most of us here, like CJ, DD, Bianca, and other members, including our ally here, Charles also, but Charles is, uh, he has a political party, but for us, we are organization who are advocating for equatorial separation. So CJ is one of our members also is in the board member. I'm, I'm the representative. I'm, I'm leading right now in this opposition. I mean, in this, uh, equatorial separation council, but go ahead. Thank you so much, CJ. I'll come to you. And I think maybe you'll be able to. No, just only clarification, ma'am. Is that possible before we proceed? Yes, yes but please go ahead. Make a yeah, comment. my point is this, you know, I wonder, you know, Hold on, uh, from our brothers, from our Nigerian brothers, you know, are we here, are you here to listen to our side of the story? Or is it, uh, is it, are we in a cross examination? Because I've seen, you know, in the floor, there's someone, you know, who kept on coming up and forth. So let us put us in a clear mind. Let us know what is that exactly. What have you prepared for? Is it a crossing of examinations? Or, or are you coming to listen to our story as people are calling for, for separation or cessation of Equatoria? Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. That's a very important question, um, CJ. What we are here to do is to hear your story. 
And as, as part of hearing the story, we understand that there might be other sides that want to also speak. So we, we just to be clear, we had um, this room was set up because we already had contacts with, with yourselves. So Odysseus, um, DD, CJ, we all, you are our guest today in terms of main guest today, right? We wanted to hear your story, but we understand in order to have to have this conversation, we know that there will be people from the other side or might that might have opposite views as to what you're going to say. So we are also going to allow them to speak. Uh, it's not going to be one. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that noise. Um, but it's... isn't it, it isn't it okay? You know, when we complete our message and then you know at the conclusions, they, it will come in a form of questions rather than you know interruptions. You know, because you know if you ask me to tell my story, I should tell it to the end until I learn. Okay. Uh -huh. Other than that, you know, then that will be a controversial issue for me. You know, the way how I look at it is a controversial. All because, right. you know, you need to listen to me first, and then afterward, all right, if at all anything were, to, any questions were to come up, we will be more than happy to answer it in a group minor, in a group, uh, let's say, answers, not individual answers, because, you know, you can't interrupt me along the way while I'm doing, okay, I'm CJ, heading ahead. CJ, can you just wait for a minute? We are, the, we, are, we are the people running this club, and we appreciate your time, and we appreciate that you are here. Uh, and we also have a way that we run our rooms. And whilst I understand what you're saying, and we are going to give you the opportunity to put forward your submission, and, 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 and we're not gonna, I'm hoping, and this is to the other mods, please, when someone is making their submission, let's try not to interject. If you have anything that you want to say or anybody else on stage you want to make a comment um, that you think we should bear in mind, you can back channel any of the mods. Uh, so I like the fact that CJ is making his point clear, and I think that also goes to everybody else here. If someone is making their submission, the rules of this house is really not to interject, unless absolutely necessary, um, but I think it, most of the things need to come through the back channel. CJ, I was going to come to you, and Odysseus has made this, made this submission. I also want to give you guys an opportunity. I see Didi as well. I also want to give you guys an opportunity to, to have some... Uh, um, excuse, me, excuse me, ma'am, sorry, I have to object here. Um, when we came up earlier, we had a meeting, and we said, let's first finish our points clarify our points, position, history, and then talk about the geographical things and then also our political situation. But we've never been given that because uh, we uh, CJ was, after that, was interrupted by Emmanuel Ajawin. And I feel that's kind of like really violating what we earlier talked about in that meeting. I don't know if you were there because we spoke that we agreed on because we don't want anybody who will only have question and answer. But it seems like now we're feeling like it's... Uh, opposite what we have agreed upon. And this is kind of like, with all respect, I thank you for hosting us, but if we are going to always do something, let us do it in the right fashion when we agree, because if we didn't agree from there, we would have not gone far. Right now, my team are not uh, happy with what's going on because we feel like we are now being silenced. And this is what exactly the regime is doing there. When we talk, we give everybody a chance to speak. We have to finish our point because you want to know what Equatoria is and who are Equatorians and what is their call. We are calling for independent. Our independent is not a debate, it's a case. So when somebody from the other side who never will ex accept my voice coming up to challenge me when I didn't even put my point first representation to you guys, that is sounds to be violation of my right. And if we believe all of us have a right to succession, let us listen to the side of the victims first, then come up and listen from those sides who disagree with the victim. And then you make a judgment there as a judge. I they are totally uh, okay. Can I speak, please? With it seems point. like we don't get the opportunity to make a comment. Can I just speak, please? I just wanted to say that uh, I wanted to apologize earlier because I was I, I was talking. I didn't know that I muted. I, I did not meet my microphone because I was trying to broadcast this in our forum and I was getting frustrated. I wanted to apologize to everybody that have have heard me talking here. I was having things that I'm handling in the background. So um, I just wanted to say that, yes, as what Odysseus has said, we have agreed in the meeting that we narrate our story first, and then from there, then we can see what happened, Peter, to that. But I wanted to say that um, I've also made a remark that I've, I've listened to the room that you guys have run, 
uh, with the Ethiopian, which has created a little bit of chaos and, and, and agreement and stuff like that. That's why I had made that, you know, let us, if you guys wanted to hear our... D, I think we lost you, Didi. If we are not ready, then maybe we should reschedule it in a proper time when we all are ready to run this properly. Otherwise, we will withdraw or just let's run it properly. Okay, okay, let us do this. Let me step hey, in guys, a little can I say bit. Something, uh, guys. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Uh, let me just. Yeah, in she, the she, 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 can you just give me one minute or two? Just one minute or two. Sorry, hold on one second. No, 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 Emmanuel. Emmanuel, you will be speaking Emmanuel, less. Can I just handle this? Thank guys, you. Guys, please, can I say please, something? Can you, just, can you just mute your mic, please? Okay. I am running this room now. Um, um, please, guys. I came in um, not. No, I came in a little bit late, so I, I must apologize um, with that I came in late. I was part of that meeting. And when I joined, I actually thought that you had made your submissions. Don, please, can you mute your mic? Um, I thought that you had made your submissions, and I thought we were doing going back and forth. I didn't realize that you hadn't done your submissions, and I really apologize to, to uh, you, Odysseus, CJ, DD, because we did agree um, before this meeting that you were going to make your submission. So he's about, I will, uh, you know, I will want you to... Sorry, man. I have no words of that. People, they have, made, they have made their submission. That's why I'm saying just give me one minute. We can hey, man, no, 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 we haven't. Even me, I didn't yeah, speak. CJ, 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 speak. Talk. CJ no, talk. No, no, Emmanuel, please hold on. No, it hold was on. a random question that you guys threw to us. They and have we have not. Told they have not, please. Hold so so of account that guys, we have wanted to. Guys, okay. I have a question. Let's start it. Please, please, please. What, please. what you guys well, I think I think the best way is to do it. Tell me what, please. Oh, DJ, please, your network is bad. Can you go out? And Guys, please let me enlighten my point here. Please. please, if please. you're not called to speak, Fies, I please, I will apologize. I will appreciate if you don't um, interrupt. Um, let me say this: his bar is going to come in next, and then we're going to take the submissions as agreed, and then we're going to take responses at some point um this is what we agreed in the back um channel meeting and i didn't realize that you haven't made your submission fully so his bar i don't know you say you want to have you want to say something so go ahead and then we'll be able to later on take more people okay you can just have them uh you know uh tell us more about uh them. yeah go ahead I, can you hear me yes we can hear you go ahead okay. Okay, I think the, we have to start by allowing the Equatorian to tell us more about them, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, and also expatiate on their culture, you know, their ethnicity and their geography and what they seek for and why they seek for that and what is actually going on between them, uh, amongst them over there in their country then I believe that people like Emmanuel can as well listen, right? Then after they have made their submission, they have led us through, you know, what they are, they are, they are fighting for and what they are doing, then we can now open up for others to come in. Sorry, Queen Sheba, just move everybody down and allow the two of them to make their submissions. No, when no, they're no, done, no, no need. You no, bring people up. Moderate. You bring people up so that they don't get interjected. That's just why I'm saying that. So wait, wait. I think we should be taking CJ. CJ, are you there? Or Odious? Any of you or any of the speakers from so the Let me reset the first, the kids, but Let me reset the room and then we'll take CJ. Let me reset the room. So everybody that's just joining in, thank you for CJ, can you move a minute? Uh, hello, Th Sheba. Thank you. For voice, please, can you be on mute for a minute, please? This is not your turn yet. Um. Thank you everybody for joining this room. This is the Rubicon Club. And in this club, we host rooms like this. We talk about um, what's happening across Africa. We have had several other conversations and not just Africa, we've actually held a, a room on Turkey at one point. Um, but today we're gonna talk about the self-determination, um, the Equatorial nation from South Sudan. That is uh, um, a number of people here. I understand they have an organization um that is leading that is part of this uh anyway they're going to talk about cj is probably going to talk about his organization at some point uh or, or this is um but today we're talking about the self-determination of the equatorial nation from south sudan 
And um, if you're just joining the conversation, um, I will say the people we have on stage, we have DD Odyssey CJ from the Equatorial Nation, I believe. And then we also have Emmanuel, I'm not sure who else is on stage, that, that is also um, from South Sudan, but uh, I think a different nation. So let's go to let's go to CJ. CJ, please give us your submission. Okay, I'm sending Omar Al-Bashir invitation to come up. Maybe he will also have something to add at the end of their conversation. It's also from that area. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So CJ, please go ahead. And again, must apologize for the, the misunderstanding earlier. We do want to hear... Digression. Yeah. CJ, go ahead. CJ, are you there? Audios can do the work if CJ is not there. No, he's back. He's back. Go ahead, CJ. All right. Audios, are you there? Is it my network? <laughs> no, it's not your network. Okay, Didi, do you want to make your submission? Because I can't seem to... Right. What's happening? Are they in the room? <laughs> yes, yes. We are in the room. Yeah, listen, listen. Uh, I have to apologize. Uh, CJ, can you meet yourself, please? Can you meet yourself? Hold on. I'm, I'm going to... I'm, yeah, I'm announcing it. Uh, I have to apologize. I really appreciate you guys, your hospitality. Can you, hold on a second, I hear echoes. Hello, guys. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Oh dear, sir, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to apologize to you guys uh, for real because uh, I, I have to agree democratically with my team. Uh, we have to withdraw at this moment. Uh, but I appreciate you guys. I really appreciate it because what we talk about here about our country and the, 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 the destiny of our people and the way how they've been mistreated so much that we cannot uh, stand uh, because we feel like there was some uh, disrespect uh, coming up from one of your members, so we have to just withdraw. But I appreciate you so much uh, for bringing us. I know some of you understand that, you know, people have to call for their rights. So I want to say thank you, but please don't take it personally. It's just that we have to take it everything, take it really serious and professional. So I thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I think Queen Sheba, give, give me also a chance because I was invited to talk too. So I think it's just fair, just rather than listening to one side. First of all, I, I, I thank you. I thank Queen Sheba and, the, and, and I... Sorry, you have to wait for us to give you the opportunity to speak. So just hold on a second. Um, CJ, did you want to say something? I know that your team... Oh, yes, Miss. Oh, yeah. yeah. First of all, you know, I would like to thank you guys, you know, for listening to us at this particular time. Well, my main point was actually I'm totally disturbed at this particular time. The reason why I'm asking for a John, if you can adjourn it, that will be more than I will be more than happy for that, because there seems to be you know disagreements in the floor. The reason why we're just asking you know to adjourn. So this if you're fighting a just cause, you don't have to be worried about what the opposite view is. We are here to learn. Never mind. And so don't don't be so sensitive about closing the room. Be the more point. sensitive about. See, this is the what? point. This is the point. Yes. Uh, please don't 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 mute me. No, I'm appealing to you to adjourn. This is what I didn't you're... say. Postpone it. I didn't say cancel it. Just postpone it. Let's adjourn it. You know, from now. You know, because we we'll adjourn it for next time. We will come again. You know, we just end it up here because there's some kind of interruptions right. that that make me annoying, annoy me. So I, I guess I do have a right of calling for adjourning the meetings, you know, because there's, there's, there seems to be, you know, I have no notice, as I've said, there wasn't any notice that, you know, there will be a submission along the way. That's why, the reason why I'm just asking you politely, guys, I understand, you know, how that is gonna be, but you know, that's that's what we what I see because the way how, even if we approach, you know, I will not be more than happy. Okay, so, seconds, uh, CJ. Omar Al-Bashir, are you here? 
Can you yeah, hear me? I'm here. Please. Uh, oh, you yeah. are also I've, from I've, Sudan, I've, right? Yeah. I just want to apologize because I'm uh, a meeting in a noisy environment. I'll keep on listening. And I'll okay, but which part of later. Sudan are you from, if you don't mind? Uh, northern part of the Sudan. Northern part of the Sudan. Yeah. Yeah. Which tribe? I'm from Kasala. I'm from Kasala. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know, but <laughs> I, sorry, can you bring Bunka up? Difficult. Let's see what Bunka sorry has to cut to you guys. I'm, I'm sorry to cut in because I'm not allowed to do that, which I apologize. This is what we've okay. been talking about. You guys seem like you're confused. You, 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 you're bringing people that have nothing even to do with this thing. And we have talked earlier. We said we'll yeah. bring our people and, 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 and then we will come and okay, sit down. Okay, Didi, let me come in, please. I, know, I understand, but meeting. Didi, what Just we are not going to we have do, can you listen to me? Meeting for I you understand where you're going. But what we are not going to do is just call you people and just listen to you people. We are going to call you and listen, but we are going to have one or two persons from the other side, even if they are the enemies, okay, to listen and let's just hear what they have to say. It's happened between the Amaras and the Or Oromos. The first people that approached us was the Amaras. But because when we started the conversation, we heard the part of the Oromos, we had to understand at a point, we, need, we had to understand exactly what, we are not saying these are the oppressors, or the, but let the other neighbors of yours listen to what you are saying. Then, what, like I said the last time, that what we do is that if you bring me in a room with Fulanese, I say my truth, and I will hey. even tell, hold on, guys, let me learn. Wait, uh, I, I want to have the rooms What's with Fulanese. Hold on, guys, let me learn, please. Once I, I am saying something, I want the Fulanese to be there. Only thing I don't want to do is to shut me down from expressing myself. I say what the truth, how it is, and I even tell you, tell, ask this Fulani guy to debunk whatever I have said. You understand? By then, it's giving even the audience the ability to know that, man, you have your fact on ground. There is nothing you are hiding under the... I, I allow the Fulanis to debate me. But what I don't like is you must not shut me down in the presence of the Fulanese. And we are being careful not to do that. But for you to be agitated on seeing the opposite side here, and you want them completely not to, you know, be around. No, 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 we can't do that. Because you give them your fact, then allow them to debunk it. Because at the end, the truth will always prevail. I understand, sir. You know, can I interject? You understand? Yeah, I understand, I understand you. Okay. You know, we didn't say no. CJ, can we, we not talk too much? We, no. we already agreed. We agreed. We were, we're just going... asking for adjoining it, and that's it. Okay, Simple. so this is what we're going to do, right? We have given okay. you the opportunity to speak today, and we would like to hear you again. I understand that you feel um, uh, you're not happy with how it's gone, and this is this is feedback for us as a, as a, as a club for us to reflect on and to see how we can make things better um, next time, especially after having had that meeting. However, since we've already set up this room, we are still going to continue. Um, Thank you. To, to hear the conversations and people who have come up stage to speak. We will also have another session at some point where we would then, if you want to have it just for yourselves to be able to uh, put put your points across then yes we can do that i don't, I don't know he's bad does that work for you or uh, we will continue of course, of course but like i said uh, as an advice please whenever because we also we are fighting the same cause in our place and i believe we also have an experience when you are giving out this your information about your facts always around the other person you throw it you even throw it to the other people right and watch them mess up their self if they are not standing on the truth. But whenever you we want to, you don't, whenever you feel agitated in their presence, then people, there is a way we human beings are wired. People will be like, why? But we can give you like two, three hours and allow the other side like 30 minutes, right? 
because this space was created for you. But the moment you feel you see them and you 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 are not comfortable at all to them to put one or two points, then people begin to, to come. Uh, people have a lot of questions to ask on that. Please. You can also we you can also uh, talk with other people fighting for the same cause. Like I said, I don't want to be in a space with the Fulanese, right? They are the oppressors in Nigeria. But whenever I want to have a debate, I tell them, come up, come up, debunk that you're killing us, debunk that we are taking our natural resources. These are the facts. What do you have to say? And you make them, you, you push them down. But the moment you want to do the otherwise, people begin to question the integrity of what you're telling us. Okay? There is no way we can invite you all here and have maybe 20 of you and not have one or two persons from the other side. It will not be fair enough. Please. Thank you. May I say something, sir? Uh, just to tell you the truth is not justified by what people say. Truth is there. Uh, our case, we thought because we are civilized time, civilized people, and we're in the 21st century when we talk, uh, we bring all our grievances there, and we bring also our case before we even get to the point uh, to argue in a case, especially if you're a lawyer or whatever, they know. I'm not a lawyer, but I know lawyers, they don't just come up and start arguing. They have to present the case first, then after the case, then there will be an argument. And then the lawyer or the judge will listen. Everybody will bring the argument there. But what I'm trying to say here, uh, regardless, what we're standing here because we know our people are dying and suffering, and this is um, it's not an emotional like as some people are calling us emotional when it comes to our right because we care about our people so much that we have to stand for their name and those unknown and victims who have been murdered there. When we come up here, we talk because this is something we took it as a solemn crusade for us to fight for our people, regardless where we are and how uh, far we are from them. But this thing, because when we talk, we wanted to talk in a professional manner to all of you to hear our case. And then you can bring the opposition side to ask questions. And I said earlier, only questions and we answer it because we don't want to, somebody try to come and give us another speech as if they are campaigning for presidency presidency here. We're not here for presidential campaign. We're here to talk about a case, about humanitarian case, about people who are suffering under regime, a corrupt regime, and under also uh, opportunist political parties who are using, uh, you know, equatorians as hostage. And I'll be honest to be sorry to say that, but this is the truth because our people have been marginalized to the point for so many years we are not even respected as Equatorian. We are always been treated as cowards, treated as, you know, our women are getting raped and murdered there. And then some people are trying to hear, uh, politicize it in a way that is not right. We supposed to finish our point to say, and I talked with my team. My team earlier said, okay, if there is anything like that, we have to withdraw. So I respect what you said. I don't complain. I don't, I don't uh, disagree with you. But there is a moment also you have to put limitation when, we are not hurt because we agreed there. I thought we we're going to continue the same way until we finish. But I see there was violation here. But I respect some of you because I know you actually stood with us and you gave your time to to come up. And we also left a meeting, very urgent meeting today, uh, that caused, talks about our country. But we said we're going to schedule that meeting on Tuesday. And so now I feel that was really not right. And but I apologize that I had to kind of like withdraw because I I talked with my team. Thank you again, and please, guys, uh, our team, let's go. We have a meeting now uh, to the next thing that we're going to do. Uh, so we withdraw, but I appreciate you, okay. but continue. Okay, thank talking you about very next much. Thing. Maybe we'll thank still you guys. have some discussion and see what we are going thank to you. do about thank that. Thank you. Okay, guys, uh, this is the Rubicon. You can follow the club. So um, I think we have uh, this guy, uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, what do you have to say? I just wanted to well, say, please, can you allow you. us? You know, thank okay, you. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, on Emmanuel, just, hold on. Just, just, I wanted to say about the topic. About the topic is about us, the self-determination people. You should not yeah. go on carry this topic again. Emmanuel is in the side of the regime. He's part of the regime. He's an opposition. He's left and right. He's part of the, 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 the corruption that is happening over there. So I wanted to say that. This is violation. Be pleased with your correction. I'm not. I'm not part of the regime. I'm not part of the regime, and please don't lie. 
I'm really so disappointed. You're part of the, the regime, yeah, Emmanuel, because uh, you don't respect uh, even somebody who's talking about the history of his own place. All right, guys, guys, he's back, he's back. No. Uh, D, can it's you hold? And we respected hold. you. So respect D. us and withdraw this. We draw okay, this. Okay, D. Uh, um, Didi, um, Didi, um, Didi, um, hold on. I was in the close room. <laughs> Didi, please hold on. Didi, please hold on. Take it easy. Yeah, Didi, please. Didi, 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 please, just, just a minute. Didi, 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 just a minute, please, just a minute. Uh, is um uh, the gentleman that spoke earlier, please, what's his name? I've forgotten. I wasn't paying attention uh, to the screen. The one that spoke Odysseus. before Didi. Odysseus. 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 Odysseus or something. Yeah. Odysseus. 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 I, I want to personally apologize. Just like you had said, we we had a modality for the program. And um, unfortunately, either intentionally or unintentionally, we did not stick to the schedule we had previously spent some time uh, prepping for so i think that um i think that would suffice so dd and um odysseus i really apologize about that i i eventually i yeah so whilst that is uh been sorted out um emmanuel unfortunately uh irrespective of um um your submissions um uh, even from your profile i can tell that you're probably going to um, give me a very pro-government submission. So respectfully, uh, this will not be the path to do that. Um, just I'm not part of the government. I'm not part of the yeah. government. Let, let me just give me, give me a minute. OK. So, Emmanuel, what I will not do is allow can you I, to... Can I, can I say something, please? We're going to close this room. Hold on, All right. hold on. So we are closing on, the room. On. But before hold we close on. the room, uh, I just uh, want uh, everybody uh, to please uh, he's follow. Wait, please, just relax. Bring mm. up get 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 tried. Let's hear what he has to say. Mm -mm. Um, just wanted to appreciate. Don't close um, the room yet. Hold on. Hishba, please get. just Hishba, hold on, please. D, let D handle handle this, please. Hishba, um, yeah. let D handle yeah. D handle it, yeah. please. Yeah. So I think um, so like I said with D D and um and Emmanuel and and Odysseus, uh, like I said, we had a prep for this meeting. We had uh, subs, uh, sufficient discussions and. I think somewhere in the modalities in our bid to get a very balanced conversation, we didn't quite follow through. So we recognize and um, we appreciate you guys. Honestly, um, we were really looking forward to um, the session. I'm sure you guys were because I see you came with your um, a lot of um, historical perspective, you know, to try and, you know, give light on us. Like I said during the prep for this meeting, uh, we recognize that the equatorial people are probably the minority or one of the not majority tribe, but also fighting self-determination. So if in the preface, like you had said, you wanted to have this session, but more importantly, to focus just a, a, a session to focus on you and your perspective with your speakers to uh, for some sort of, you know, balance to at least give you a chance to have your, your facts properly documented. I think that would have been fair. I also think we didn't do too good a job in moderating because um, we would have allowed you to make your perhaps your full lecture and then close the lecture series and start taking maybe questions or feedback to some of parts of the lecture that you were given that we were not very um we're not understanding so like i said dd and odysseus and to the rest of the room like i said more learning um, typically what we try to do at the rubicon is that we um we, we bring in um especially africans we focus on africans that, that are on, on on the path of self-determination and we're trying to f form a very strong cluster so that each one can help one uh, liberate one and teach one uh, we all would eventually form the crux of the new um, shall I say inter-African relations? I mean, you are going to, you know, discuss as representatives of the new equatorial nation with probably trade conversations with, say, the Igbo nation who are trying to have trade conversations. So let's say Biafra or Igbo nation. So there obviously it was very important that we start to recognize each other many, many years before we start to even even actualize our nations and we also use each other's story to inspire you know submit joint petitions to un for instance and also you know give a uh, mutual spotlight to all parties like i said i'm very confident with the newer people and the dinka people unfortunately when i was you know 
engaging with them, we're not able to speak with your people. So today will have been a very good day to just listen to you and then you know, add it to the other knowledge that we had from your uh, country. But hey, uh, the learning, and it will definitely be reshared, like I said. So again, apologies for that. I completely agree with um, the rest of the moderators. Um, what we want to do is uh, please follow the room, um, Rubicon. Uh, we have intellectual conversations all the time. Um, we try to bring in a lot of... One thing that is very clear is that um, Africa is filled up with a lot of um, um, anomalies, the poverty, the unemployment, the sheer lack of development, the fact that only 17% of intra-Africa trade happens within Africa, the fact that uh, of the poorest people in the world, we have the largest concentration of poor people as a continent, uh, the fact that we are landlocked in ethnic conflicts for Africa more than any other country in the world, the fact that we have about 36 to 37 unrecognized um, African countries from Ambazonia in Cameroon to the three uh, ethnic nations um, and more that make up the current country of South Sudan to the three dominant um, ethnic nations that make up the own of Ethiopia, Eritrea, uh, a lot of unrecognized nations who are, um, as Africans, who are um, being frustrated by the African Union, um, who, who, who continues to perpetuate the um, the, the colonial, um, you know, um, architecture for Africa in terms of subjugating and uh, exploiting African resources for the benefit of the European world and, and the um, um, European and, you know, the UK and all that is being done at the cost of the indigenous people of Africa. So until we are able to come together as a people to undo the malicious feast of cannibals in 1886 in the Berlin Conference, where African nations were balkanized along unnatural borders. I mean, a classic case is from my tribe, where we have um, the Yorubas of, you know, locked in Nigeria, and just next door in Benin Republic, we also have a significant Yoruba population also landlocking there, and all over uh, several other enclaves as well. These kinds of um, unfair, um, um, unfair artificial borders are responsible for many of the inter-ethnic tribal conflicts that continues to perpetuate uh, the underdevelopment of Africa. And until we resolve and we rearrange the ethnic lines along what they were supposed to be before superior gun power and colonial, uh, colonial powers um, upset the natural balance of things within Africa will continue to experience many, many cases of more. I think the, uh, the poverty we are seeing now, the unemployment we are seeing now, the underdevelopment we are seeing now are just um, um, symptoms of a disease that has first had for too long. And I believe strongly that the education of this generation, the historical perspective of this generation, the economic powers, thinking capacity of this generation might be uh, the last hope for Africa before it is completely recolonized, because it looks like we might be going back there, considering how airports are being taken over by the Chinese government and Africa continues to be locked in loans and aids that continue to deprive it of any opportunities for economic prosperity. So uh, today was a very good day for us all to learn about one or two things about, you know, having this kind of difficult conversations. And I really want to appreciate the equatorial um, people for coming to speak with us today and um, we are very confident that we are going to learn. I, I learned so much from so many people. I have, um, uh, I think it's numeric from Nua. I have um, a brother in um, Oromo, Gada, absolutely inspirational. If Gada is speaking, I try not to even, I just enjoy it because there are so many brilliant minds within Africa, which I am very confident will form the next generation of leadership that will emanate from this continent and possibly take us out of this mess for the next generation. And we have to understand that Africa has to get it right for the black race. Um, if you look at China today and the Asian countries, they seem to be getting it right because of the strength of the um, Asians in diaspora, mostly the Chinese in diaspora. If you look at how after the Gary Act was passed in America in the 1800s and the Chinese people started to repatriate funds to rebuild and um, invest heavily in, in Chinese uh, buildings, industries, and look at what it has translated today in the 1900s where China started to reclassify its economy, opened up for external um, you know, um, production of goods. And look at China today is the world leader. It's a similar story in Israel as well, after the Zionist movement and so many other um, perspective 
brought Israel into light and took it out of um, from diaspora and fixed in Israel. We can also connect the the work of the Indian diasporas, especially in tech companies from Microsoft, IBM, Google, and all that, to the tech boom that eventually transformed the economy of India. So what is very clear is that a lot of Africans in diaspora are responsible for the transformation that will happen in Africa. And a lot of Africans in Africa who are currently asleep and have no you know, understanding of the chaos that we're currently suffering uh, will continue to feel inferior and think that the only way to resolve uh, inter-Africa conflict is by the gun, when the Europeans resolve their, complete, their conflicts over dialogue and intellectual conversation. We must be able to educate one another to let us know that the real development or strength of Africa will not happen by the barrel, even though the barrel might be inevitable for some conversations, but it will happen by the strength of superior arguments and intellectual conversation. So at this stage, um, I think I would like to hand over to Queen Sheba uh, for closing remarks. Thank you very much. Queen. Uh, Thank you very Queen much. Goes in, I think there are people that have been getting the messages from people that want to be given one or two minutes uh, each, uh, if that, if you wouldn't mind. I'm just saying that I've gotten a I think, I think we have to respect the people who asked us to create I mean, the Queen yeah. Sheba. Yes, yes, I, I do agree. Um, D, 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 is Mr. Charles, is it okay for Mr. Charles to make a quick comment? DD or CJ? Um, see, Miss, I understand we want to allow people to make comments, but I think at this moment in time, we want, I will if prepare. Gedi Stad want to, if Gedi Stad want to say something, you can, you can, you guys can give him, but I just, I'm just saying that I'm appealing to you kindly. There's no yeah. need for further conversation. Exactly. I yes. feel like this room should be shut. We, we want yeah, to we leave. Will We're just waiting room. for this room to be shut. Miss, Didi, I agree. There's that no need for will... us to sit to sit here and listen you guys talking over us. Didi. Okay. My apologies. One second, please. I apologize sincerely because this shouldn't have occurred, and I wish this this has hadn't occurred. And from the deepest part of my heart, I offer my sincere apologies to you, to the members of your team. If you want us to close this room, I think we will just go ahead and close the room right away. It's I'm sorry to anyone that wanted to speak before now, but... As but it's, as it's as also insulting for those that you've invited, and you're not my given apologies, a chance. My apologies, I we think we must... We this, please. We must respect the wishes... Change the topic about yes, Equatorian. We the will, person that we will to go, go ahead. Go and create a different room, but without an Equatorian issue okay. of secession oh, or anything you. like that's, that. That's because okay. we are the people for secession. That's just right, a disrespect here. Right. Yeah, what you guys are right, um, saying? Imagine yeah, the, we go and do Everybody is okay. Let's go ahead and close the room, please. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, Didi? I I'm going to create a room about you guys.